This is Capturing Light, episode number 145 with Zach Ray. Welcome to Capturing Light, a director of photographers podcast, spotlighting cinematography tips, tools, and techniques, inspiring and educating filmmakers like you so you can illuminate your vision. And now your host, Les Gaddis. Welcome to the Capture and Light Podcast. I'm your host, Les Gaddis, and we are in 2024. That is crazy. Um, and a huge accomplishment um, being that I started this podcast in 2015. Um, but that's crazy. Time is just passing. Um, I'm excited today because I, um, I'm i going to share an interview with you that I did with Zach Ray He's a cinematographer, he's a colorist, and he's also an app developer. Um, and uh, he has some pretty cool apps that we're going to talk about um, that can help you um, just with pre-production, with um, production as well. So, like, it's it's something you definitely want to check out. So, here's that interview with Zach Ray. All right, so I want to thank Zach Ray for coming on the Capture Online Podcast. How are you doing? Happy to be here. Thanks very much for having me. Yeah, I'm excited to um, talk with you because you're a cinematographer, you're a colorist, and, and a, an app developer, apparently, too. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, it's a little side thing that I did, started for fun um, ages ago, and uh, has become, you know, you know, a solid part of, uh, of what I do. So um, they all obviously go together very well, um, those three roles, so... Right. So how did you um, like what got you into, you know, the film industry um, in the first place? Um, yeah, I mean, you know, the way I assume most of us do, which is, you know, watching movies as a kid and, um, you know, uh, getting your friends to uh, to recreate them. And then you just slowly upgrade your equipment until you find yourself in your mid 30s with a lot of stuff and you're doing it for a job. Um, <laughs> and uh I guess um, I guess there's you know there's these two tracks right of either you start off in um, uh, working as you know a PA and then an assistant and then you know uh, you just work your way up the chain from there and then there's the more modern track of um, just sort of declaring yourself a, a DP and 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 kind of trying to get work from there and I did a bit of both but I, I'd say I mostly focused on the on the second track and. Um, uh which one is the better track i don't know but um but that's kind of where i've uh found myself now yeah right yeah and um so how long have you been um how long have you been doing this full time uh probably about 12 years now maybe 13 um so yeah i uh um got into uh Got out of college in 2011 and uh, pretty much just went for it um, after that, moved to New York and uh, have been working at it ever since. Right. And was this like a traditional college or um, was it like a film school or? This was a uh, Mass College of Art in Boston. Um, so it was a they did have a film program. It was highly experimental. Um, I think they were all disappointed in those of us who wanted to make uh, narrative. <laughs> um, but I do remember it fondly. Um, and most importantly, um, uh, got, you know, friends that are still, um, very strong, uh, connections in the filmmaking world and people that I work with all the time. Um, and that I wouldn't have that any other way. Um, in terms of, you know, whether or not the college actually did that much for my career outside of, you know, in terms of actual instruction, I'm not so sure. Um, mm -hmm. uh, that's not to say uh, there's anything wrong with the Mass Art Film Program. I think it's really great, especially if you're into experimental uh, work. But um, but I guess uh, these days I kind of uh, am on the fence in, in, in the whole go to film school or not go to film school. Right. Or just go to a school, I guess I should say. Um, mm -hmm. It's, um, I, I think, I, you know, I wish there was like a film summer camp for 
college age people that we could just you know go to and and maybe there is i don't know about it um and you can meet people there and you can make your own work um and you can like learn at your own pace uh without right. getting to accruing large amounts of debt um mm -hmm. so is of course the issue but <laughs> yeah so um so when you got out of school and then um you hit the ground running i'm doing video projects you know being a cinematographer um obviously you you like you had this thought okay there is a need here that i can you know maybe fill this void in creating a certain type of app so mm -hmm. like how did i guess the first because we're going to talk a little bit about the three mm -hmm. apps that you created but um how did you even really get into um the app space and thinking, you know, hey, I have a, a tool that I can, you know, pr perhaps help me and other people. Yeah. So that actually started when I was still in college. Um, and uh, they had these cameras that they had available for us to rent. There was like this, these like Sony, like EX3s. And um, there was a Panasonic HVX camera. And then we were just starting to get into the seven D's and the five D's that was like just happening when I was towards the end of school. Um, and I just wanted to understand what the options were. Um, I originally started as an Excel spreadsheet, actually like a PDF that I made and I like printed out and uh, put on the wall. Um, and for me, it really was just wanting to um, compare apples to apples when choosing a piece of gear, you know? Um, so, you know, I think there's, um, with any camera, um, there is, or lens, there's a lot of, um, marketing BS, um, right. out there, you know, like this, you know, this camera will take your work to the next level and stuff. And like, that's fine. Um, but it does, sometimes you have to dig a little bit to really know, like, what does it really do? Um, and how is it really any better from its competitors on like a line by line way and in a way that you can compare to other cameras. Um, so it really just boils everything down to comparable um, specs. And mm -hmm. um, and obviously that is not the whole story. Like there are some things that it doesn't capture, like how well built a camera is and how easy it is to use. And of course, what the image looks like. Um, but it gives you a good starting point um, and it gives you an objective reference for your camera um whether that's comparing to other cameras or to check something about your own camera um or discussions with producers or editors um or vfx people like i i have it open all the time when i'm just on the phone talking to other people you know in the crew mm -hmm. uh, and this and is your first app that is the first step which is called camera kit yeah mm -hmm. um and uh and then I made Lens Kit a couple of years later. It's a similar story, just making tools that I thought would be helpful for myself and for others. Um, and again, like the marketing thing, like, I mean, cameras, camera marketing is like vague enough, but lens right. marketing is it's even just, more vague. <laughs> yeah, it's just like iconic in imagery and and like merging the art of, of science and cinema and, uh, and, um, and I sympathize with whoever has to write something new about lenses, you know, in 2023. Mm -hmm. um, but I think it is useful to have a way to really compare the hard data. Um, not saying that this stuff doesn't count. Um, of course it does. Uh, right. But just being able to see like the concrete side of such a subjective creative tool, you know. Um, right. And then finally, I just put out one called Finder Kit, um, which is different than the others because... Um, there are already similar apps on the market, which you're probably familiar with. Um, and I love those apps and I've used them for years as I'm sure you probably have too. Mm -hmm. um, I guess at the end of the day, I just thought I could do something that was, um, a little faster and easier to use. Um, and I just had, you know, certain designs in my head that I thought could work really well um and uh yeah ultimately i think i i did accomplish that i am actually really proud of how it came out and um i think it does make it a little bit easier um to scout or to test angles on set um or to make a quick storyboard or whatever it is you need to do right do you want to tell us a little bit about uh what camera kit is yeah so um for those that don't know camera kit is 
a database of camera specs and various tools. Um, there's a storage space calculator, there's a transfer time calculator, uh, sensor size, battery runtime, um, and then lens kit is basically the same thing, but for lenses, as thousands of lenses, uh, mostly Cine, but I'm adding more still lenses all the time. Uh, it has specs, coverage charts, lens matching between cameras, uh, Super 35 equivalent, tool for checking Netflix compatibility, um, and then there's an unsung uh, hero for me, which is the search function where you can just type in the focal length that you need and uh, you can narrow it down by like aperture and weight and just see all your options. Um, and uh, and then last month I released a brand new one called Finder Kit, which is a viewfinder app. Um, I mean, if you're not familiar with what viewfinder apps are for, mm -hmm. um, they are basically, it lets you plug in your camera and your lens and you get a preview of what your camera will see in terms of like the field of view and, and in terms of the angle, um, which saves you having to lug a camera out to a scout um, or even if you're on set, you know, looking into the other side of the room, um, you know, on some heavier uh, cameras and um, and even if not heavier cameras, like it, it does save you time, even with small, like quick run and gun sets, I will still take out my, you know, phone viewfinder to like quickly test something. You right. know what I mean? Um, so it's that, uh, and um, and then there's features like, you know, a um, an image gallery built in, um, and there's like PDF exporting of you know shot lists, and you can make custom looks and put on aspect ratios, and you know use like lens adapters and speed boosters. Um, so uh, yeah, that's the sort of thing you can expect to find um, in a viewfinder app, and that you'll find in in Finder Kit. Right, and yeah, the applications. I mean, you could do it for pre-production for scouting like mm -hmm. you said you could do it during production to you know help you know speed up time you know totally. getting shots yeah 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 you can use it for um i had a user just you know emailing me about comparing different anamorphic um options which mm -hmm. uh which you know if you've shot anamorphic you know is is kind of hard to keep all of the different you know, between like the sensor mode and the lens squeeze and all that and, and right. whatever camera you're using, like it's it's pretty complicated stuff. So it's really helpful to just be able to be like, okay, am I going to shoot with this camera on this lens or this camera on this lens? Or maybe you're shooting with both and seeing like how, you know, how different they are and how they interact with each other or finding a match between the two um, can be uh, can be a lot easier when you just see it, you know? Right. No, for sure. So how are you how are you balancing, you know, like app life with cinematography life with just you, Zach, as a human being life? <laughs> uh yeah, great question. Um yeah, cinematography um kind of has since since COVID really, cinematography hasn't uh been taking up as much of my time, um, which is fine. I mean, it gave me time to finish, you know, um, Finder Kit, which is, I'm grateful for that. Uh, and then of course the strikes. So, you know, that kind of obliterated, you know, um, any chance of, of coming back. So um, during that period, so um, yeah, so it's been, uh, it's it's been more of a work app or a life app balance uh, in the last, um, you know, probably a year or so mm -hmm. uh, I do have a you know a feature coming up in a couple months so um that'll maybe get me back into the groove a little bit but yeah we'll see it's um it's kind of an interesting now that this is out um it's kind of an interesting crossroads for me you know personally and professionally and and seeing um exactly um where I want to go next and maybe put more time into apps um maybe you know go back and put more time into cinematography um mm -hmm. you know we'll see it's uh, right yeah yeah so is um are you like do you have a team that helps you with the apps is it just you like it's just me um yeah I, I pretty much um i i did hire someone in the first years of uh of camera kit uh to um help me do the code because i didn't know how to code um and uh and then COVID showed up in 2020 and I took that as an opportunity to learn how to code and so I just sort of redid that whole thing from scratch and um from there I was able to do the others myself too so yeah it's a one one stop shop 
Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's that's awesome. You know, like just the the fact that you you have um, something that you've created that's tangible is, I think, such a. And when I say tangible, I mean it's a digital product, but um, something that uh, is readily available and uh, quite useful for um, creatives, I think, is something that um, you should be proud of because. Um, when I downloaded the apps and I, I, I used them um, and I was just playing around with some of the features, I was like, wow, this is really cool. Like, you know, and then, um, you know, just doing a little bit more research and I was like, wait, a cinematographer did this? got to talk to this guy. <laughs> I think only a cinematographer could have made, uh, could have made it to the way that it, you know, the, the way that it's made. Honestly, it's, it's, right. it, it really is one of those necessity mother invention um, situations, you know. Um, just you know needing it to be as fast as it is um to use and just having you know just knowing the right features that people need and obviously and i had a bigger program and, and plenty of people um you know contributed uh features for which i'm super grateful feature ideas um but uh but i know i wouldn't want you know uh somebody who doesn't work on set to to make an app for working on set and right sometimes you do use those and and you can tell uh you can mm -hmm. tell the difference right so uh where can people get the app uh it's on the, app the apps store. yes mm -hmm. yeah it's on it's for iphone um at the moment um on the app store uh so the first one is camera kit second one is lens kit and then the new one is finder kit awesome and um is there a price associated with it yeah so um i have to say I, I can't do it for free um mm -hmm. i do have to explain to people sometimes that uh who are disappointed by that um basically it, it uh, the cost is um uh there's two ways you can buy it. there's a subscription which is mm -hmm. five dollars a month and that gives you access to all three sort of adobe style you know mm -hmm. you get all three apps um and then you can buy them on their own um as a lifetime purchase too mm -hmm. um and the lifetime is fifty dollars for camera kit, fifty dollars for lens kit, and then twenty five for finder kit. Um, right. And yeah, basically, what I tell people is this is the amount of money that um, uh, it takes for me to, you know, treat it as seriously as I do. Um, which uh, I I I know, you know, for for apps, it's uh, it's it's not cheap. But I think um, what I've noticed. Um, having used filmmaking apps for a while now is that a lot of them come along um, and not a lot of them last. Uh, right. Um, and I, I, I do want this to last. Um, I, mm -hmm. I want them to, uh, to not, you know, go to the, the app graveyard. Um, and so, um, so for me, that's, that's what it takes um, to, right. to keep them alive, you know, um, for sure. updated. And, you know, obviously apps like this are only as good as having the latest camera data, um that uh, or lens data um mm -hmm. that you can put together and and use so um i really do try and keep it updated very frequently with the latest cameras and that's how i'm able to do it right yeah definitely and um you know like we're not going to go into other apps and but you know like you're really really good filmmaking apps you know there's a cost associated with it and i mean you just explained beautifully the reason why because i mean like you you need the updates you need you know things to be current because there's going to be a camera introduced tomorrow or the next day yeah. <laughs> or yeah, lens. Exactly. right yeah so yeah. um yeah no for sure that's awesome yeah, it's, it's it's one thing for like a time code calculator to to be you know five bucks one and right. done i totally get that um but yeah something like that it really is only as good as 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 it's updated so um, right yeah. for sure awesome um so i know you mentioned um that you have um, a feature possibly coming up um you know like are there any other um like do you have any other apps that you're working on like what's in the future for for zach ray cinematographer app developer yeah, we we will see. I maybe we'll add another role to that list. Um, who knows? Uh, I don't have any apps coming up right now. I'm kind of just breathing after getting that one out. It was right. like a year of of solid work. 
Um, and I don't, in the same vein as, as the, you know, app graveyard thing, I don't want to make so many that I can't keep up with them. You know what I mean? Right. So I'm just going to let this one sit for a little bit and see, um, obviously keep it updated, like I said, but, you know, see how it feels to, to maintain, you know, three apps as opposed to two. And, um, um, yeah, besides that, like I said, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm kind of open, um, I'm uh I'm sitting here seeing what's next. So if anybody has any ideas, hit me up. Um, <laughs> I'll probably I I also do these sort of travel documentary things with this um comedian uh Giulio Gallerati. So um, uh he takes me to interesting places around the world. So we'll see. Uh, maybe we'll do one of those next. Right. Awesome. Cool. And um, if someone wants to keep up with what you're doing, um from your cinematography standpoint, if someone has, you know, a question about an app or maybe a recommendation, like how can they get in, get in touch with you? Uh, yeah, I would say the easiest is the Instagram, which is underscore Zach Ray, Z-A-K-R-A-Y. Um, and uh, I occasionally post app stuff there. I don't want to spam people too much um, and, uh, and film work there as well. So that's probably the best place to do it. Okay. Awesome. So, uh, Zach, thanks so much for taking a little bit of time and talking about, um, some apps that will, I think definitely make, um, some cinematographers better and more efficient on set. <laughs> I would be glad for that to happen. And, uh, and if that's the case for you, then, um, you know, please drop me a line and, and I'd love to hear from you. Um, it's, it's, it's one thing to like look at the number of downloads uh, I have um, from the app store per day, but it's it's a whole other thing to just hear from somebody who is like really using it and enjoying it or has an idea for how to improve it. Um, I love hearing those and I love talking about them. So yeah, drop me a line. Yeah, we'll do for sure. So again, I want to thank Zach for coming on the Caption Light podcast. Be sure to go to his website, follow him, download the apps, support a, a filmmaker a cinematographer that's doing it and doing it big. Um, and uh, the tools are um, really useful. Um, they're um, really, really nicely designed. And you can get a lot of information, um, you know, curated in one place, which is super cool. So, uh, yeah, um, that's that's all I got with that. <laughs> um, if you have any questions, feel free to hit me up. Um, you can hit me up, uh, email me at, um, less at gaddisvisuals.com. You can, um, hit me up on Instagram at less gaddis. Um, with that, hope you have an amazing, amazing year and I'll catch you in the next episode of Capturing Light. Thanks for listening to Capturing Light with Les Gaddis, a director of photographers podcast. Inspiring and educating filmmakers like you so you can illuminate your vision. A Gaddis Visuals production.